Welcome to Shorty Supercoach. Going to take a look at the Hawks today. Um, just wanted to touch base on their lock, risk, breakout contender, and a bloke who's no chance for my side. Going to take a look at my team as well. Shorty paid the big bucks and actually got some uh, Supercoach Gold subscription, so about time after five years. So I will be putting out a team, even though I'm pretty sure it's public anyway now, but uh, kind of makes my last comment irrelevant. But I did buy it before I could actually access it, mainly because I just get sick of clicking on articles when I'm dying to hear what some bastard says about some player and I can't read it. So I finally pulled my finger out, but sorry, Herald Sun, I'll probably cancel it in three months. But uh, anyway, uh, gonna take a look at the Hawks. A lock, I got nothing for you. I Tell me if there's a lock out there for Hawthorne. I think the Hawks are gonna be bottom four. I think they're really gonna struggle. I couldn't sit here and say this guy's a lock. You know, some teams are like a bit of a stretch. You know, they're not a lock, but gee, they're a great player. They always fire. I couldn't pick anyone, to be honest. But if you've got one, let me know. In terms of a risk, the newly appointed skipper, Benny McAvoy. Now, he has been sort of a strange little experiment of late. Now, we've seen the big fella who's dominated in the ruck for many years, be trialled down back, which is um, you know something we haven't really seen any key ruckman or any sort of key post at that sort of height who's played ruck do that type of a role. He did it okay at times, but I think that experiment is done. And I feel like the captaincy, I really feel as if he's just going to go back to his rucking capabilities. I don't see like him experimenting with that any longer. I feel as if he's just simply too slow. At times, he would intercept Mark quite well, but I don't think we're going to see him there. Obviously, if we do see him back in the ruck, maybe we've got something to think about. When he was doing that, he averaged 90 plus for three years in a row, 2017, 2018, 2019, I believe it was. And one of those was a triple figure. You know, he was averaging in the hundreds. So, yeah, he's a bit older now, but he is relatively cheap if we feel like he can get a fair bit of the load of the ruck. He may well be sharing it. We'll just have to wait and see. But that's why he's in the risk category. I think he's definitely capable of going 90 plus with that sort of a role change. But equally, maybe his best foot is behind him. Maybe he'll continue to play in the back line at times. We'll just have to wait and see. But, you know, it's unique to see a guy that could ruck be available in the back line. So <clears throat> it's quite interesting there. Um, breakout contender. I mean, I've got Tommy Phillips, and I don't know. He's not really a breakout contender, is he? But I wanted to talk about him. Um, averaged uh, 90 in 2018, back down to 83 in 2019. Obviously, last year was a tough year. He now finds himself at the Hawks, former pie. You know, in those couple of years I referenced uh, earlier, he could really find a stack of the pill. You know, he really found high 20 possessions a lot of the time. Out on the wing, he loved it. Now we've seen Smith leave the Hawks. Um, Scully, of course, is retired. You know, Phillips is the man. He's the guy to really take on that predominant ring, wing role. But I'm not going to endorse him. I just don't think, I don't think he's cheap enough for what he may or may not do. I just feel as if a wingman in a really poor side doesn't always thrive in terms of super coach. And it's just a bit awkward for me, unless we see some amazing footy from him through pre-season. I couldn't see myself going with him, but I understand the interest because he is a guy that just racks the ball up. But he's not he's not always the most effective player by foot. Finds a lot of the ball, isn't always super effective, but he does, he keeps working, keeps finding it. It's, it's got to be a no from me, but he is a chance to find himself back in those numbers where he's a bit higher up. But... Let's not kid ourselves. He's never really averaged too much more than 90. I think that average was 90.1. So it's not as if we should really get carried away with um, anything too crazy in his scoring ability. One I wanted to mention is Jack Scrimshaw. Now, of course, the main talking point for the Hawks is probably who's going to replace that James Sicily role while he misses the majority of the year. Now, intercepting defender, who's going to step up? And there were some small signs late in the year where Scrimshaw scored a couple of 90s, turned up a couple of times. 
I just wonder if he, he could be that guy. Maybe not intercepting as much as Sicily did, but he's a really nice kick. I think he's the sort of guy that, you know, is just sort of finding his feet now. He is still young. He's had a lot of injuries, a change of club in his short career. I just wonder. He averaged 74.4 last year. It wouldn't shock me if he boosted that into the high 80s and maybe into the 90s. It wouldn't shock me, but... I couldn't sit here and say, this is a bloke you've got to have high on your radar, you know, definitely consider him. I'm just saying, think about it, you know, he could be a sneaky little super coach draft option because I really do think he's better than 74.4, not only with more opportunity, natural improvement, and I just, I think he's a likely type. So keep him on your radar, um, but maybe for more a super coach draft perspective, unless you really love him. And no chance on my side, Tommy Mitchell. Now, some people may have thought maybe he's the lock for Hawthorne, but for me, he's no chance. I mean, I think he's still nursing a bit of a shoulder complaint, and that's enough for me. I mean, I know it's not his leg and those other issues he's had that have kept him out for a long time, but any sort of a niggle with Tommy Mitchell, any, to be fair, any bloke that's really struggling through pre-season and racing the clock for round one is a no for me. I mean, I've ruled out Dangerfield, ruled out Heaney in the last week. You know, they, they've just got to show you so much more. You just can't have them in your sides at the moment because they're struggling. They're not having good pre-seasons and they cost a bloody lot of money. So Tommy Mitchell, injury history, and I just don't know if we can we can start with the guy. I, I really like him as an option, but to start with him, I'm just not so sure. But if you're a real Tommy Mitchell fan, just keep an eye on him. But look, there's nothing too sexy about the Hawks this year. And as a Cats fan, I love saying that because I've been waiting a long time to see them suck. And uh, sorry to any Hawks fans out there, don't unsubscribe. But it's just a natural sort of rivalry and they might stick it right up me. They might come out and actually play some good footy. But uh, probably the first time in a long time I haven't mentioned Chad Wingard in a preview. Maybe he gets a midfield time. I say that every year, but maybe, maybe he will. We'll wait and see. But uh, thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you soon. Cheers.